Hello, today I'm going to show you how to solder your electronics parts together. For example, let's say that you have a board here and you need to connect it to your electronics with an Arduino wire. How do you actually connect it? Well, if you can solder these headers to the actual board, which usually the headers come with the board, then all you need to do is take the other part of the Arduino wire and stick it into one of the pins and you're ready to go. This is not an easy process, so I'm going to walk you through the supplies that you're going to need and how you actually start the soldering process and complete it through to the end. First of all, we have a Tiswall soldering station, which comes with a solder iron. So this is the solder iron. And the tips that it comes with are not really the ideal size. This one is the ideal size that I've actually purchased separately. As you can see, it's a pretty decent size. I believe this one is 0.2 millimeters, 25 millimeters this way, and 0.2 millimeters radius at the end. So I find that this size is really good. I bought them on Amazon. And the first thing that you have to do with the soldering iron is actually tinning the tip, which is very important for preparing it. And the supplies that you use to do that is the rosin paste flux and the soldering wire. The rosin paste flux, which looks something like this, it's this paste, is actually very important for the soldering process. It's essential for soldering. It removes the oxides, it promotes wetting, it enhances flow, and prevents reoxidization, which contributes to the formation of strong, reliable joints. So you really want these soldering joints at the back to be really strong, because that way, what you're doing is you're actually connecting these round solder pads that are made of metal to these headers. That's what you really want, is you want a strong connection between the board and the wire essentially and the way you do that is you make sure that the connection between these headers and the board is is a good connection so that's what the rosin paste flux is really important for this is the solder wire this is one of my favorites and this 44 type of kester wire is actually extremely popular this is my favorite by far it has instant action wetting behavior, which means that the metal will flow really well, which is really important to get a good connection. We also have here a cleaning wire. This is what it looks like. I got it off of Amazon. That basically allows you to clean off metal from the tip once it's hot. And then I have this it's kind of like a mini fume hood, essentially. It has this filter here, and the airflow goes this way to remove the smoke from the area. So if you look up fume extractor online, you'll probably be able to find one of these. It's also called a smoke absorber. Great, so now we have all the supplies. The first step is to tin the tip, which is extremely important. If you don't tin the tip and prepare it properly, what happens is when you're trying to solder the board, you won't be able to get the solder to flow properly and to look nice and to have good joints that you need for a good connection. You're just going to have a hard time soldering if it's not prepared because the end is going to look more burnt at the tip. This one is a good one that I've already prepared, but I will show you for the purposes of this video how to start from the beginning. So, step one, let's say that you have a fresh tip, like this one, for example, and you've bought it off of Amazon and you're ready to go and you haven't actually used it before. The first step is just to get some solder paste onto the end of the tip. And it doesn't have to be too much, uh, just kind of cover the tip area like this. Great. So now that we have some flux on the end, and this process works great even if you have a different type of soldering wire, but this actual wire has resin paste inside of the core, which can be very handy. But if you didn't have flux core and you just had this paste, this is definitely what you would need to do. So essentially what I'm doing is I'm wrapping the wire around the tip of the soldering iron. And you can use your handy dandy wire strip 
clipper or uh, wire cutting tool. This is a two-in-one tool. So I'm just gonna cut that off here. It's okay if it's dangling a bit or you can sort of continue the process. So now you have this cold soldering iron. You have the resin paste flux that is coated on it. And then you have the soldering wire that has been wrapped around the end. And now all I do is I put it in there and I turn on the temperature. Great. So the temperature that I usually use is around 640 degrees Fahrenheit. And you'll notice there's a lot of smoke here. And that's what this is for. We can turn it on and now you can see the smoke is disappearing. The smoke is actually going through the fume extractor through the filter so that we're not exposed to a lot of the fumes. It's just below 650 Fahrenheit. And it's very important for it to heat up because if it's not heated up, the metal will not flow and you won't get good joints. And for this particular board, it keeps showing a zero value of the load cell for the weight if I don't solder the HX711 board correctly. So that's really important to get your soldering process correct. Great, so now the soldering iron has heated up a bit. And you'll notice that the metal actually kind of melted onto the wire here. You can see it's kind of melted on there. So what you're going to do is you're going to clean the solder iron tip by pressing it into the cleaning wire. And now you can see the tip is clean and we're ready to go. So this is what it's supposed to look like when it's done. Let's get started with the soldering process. This is an HX711 board. Some of them look a little different from each other. This one came with a header. You can see on the back that you need uh, four of them on one side and the rest on the other. So what we actually have to do is to cut this with the wire cutters. So I'm gonna count one, two, three, four pins and then cut it right after. So one, two, three, I'm going to cut it right where that mark is. Okay. So now what we have is a four pin and uh, the rest of the pins here. Um, so now that part is ready to go. And what I usually do is I put the shorter end of the header into the pad so that the shorter ends are actually sticking out the back. You want that to be the case because when you apply heat, you don't want to mess with the components on the front. You want to be soldering from the back. And usually I'll set it up like this. So now you have the solder iron chip that's been prepared. And then you have the Kester soldering wire. So this is the Kester soldering wire here. Now there are three steps that I would say here. Step one is to take the solder iron and to press it against both the wire here and the pad. And that's really important because if you don't press it against both of those components, then actually what happens is you only get this metal wire sticking to either the pin or the wire there and the pad. And if it doesn't stick to both of them, then you won't get a good joint. So right now I'm basically trying to press the soldering iron chip against both the wire or the header and the solder pad, which is the circular part. And then I kind of move the flux core soldering wire around the other side. And the goal is to hopefully get it to melt. And you can see here, it has melted. Now we do the same thing. Again, we press the solder iron to both the wire and the round pad, and then we put the soldering wire on the other side. We move it around, and the goal is to wait until it's ready to melt on that side. And you may need to wiggle this side around, the soldering iron, wiggle it around because it may not actually be touching both the header and the circular pad and if this wire gets stuck to your part just use this soldering iron to release it with the heat great so now we've got a nice little joint there 
again apply the soldering iron to both the header and the circular pad then wait a bit and then try to push the wire oops, around the other side until it's melting in this nice little ball and as you keep going what you'll find is that the board starts to heat up a bit and it becomes a little bit faster to, to go through this process. And remember that the board uh, will be very hot during this process. So definitely make sure not to touch it directly with your hands right away if possible. Sometimes I like to use tape to pick up the board instead of my hands just in case it's going to be hot. clean the wire here. Now the board might be hot so I like to pick it up with a piece of tape if possible. Let's take a look at our soldering joints. What we have here is these joints and we can take a look at them. They look pretty good. Unfortunately this last one here has a problem. Yeah so this one here, see these ones look pretty good right? They, it looks like there's a good connection between the circular pad and the header but over here we can see the, the furthest one on the right there's actually a problem with that you can see there's some of a gap there that there's not metal fully around the edges and what that means is there may not be a good connection and so we need to redo that one so let's go back in we can first clean this by pressing it into the cleaning wire. And again, step one, press the soldering iron against both the header and the pad, and then to wait, and then to touch the metal, to try to touch it to the other side. Once it's hot enough, it should melt. And if it's not working at all, you may just need to increase the temperature if it doesn't seem like any of the metal is flowing here but at this point we just have to wait a little bit kind of sometimes i'll tap it around the sides too that should be good to go and again to know whether the tip is actually hot enough what you do is you actually heat it up and then you take the wire Press the wire against it and see if that metal is actually melting onto the tip. If it is, you should be pretty much good to go. You may need just a little bit hotter than that if it's just not working, but most likely the problem is that you're actually not touching this tip to both the circular pad, so the circular circles, and the header. If it's not touching both, it's not going to work. 